Welcome to the Meetings Podcast, the meeting organizer's podcast source for what's new in the meetings and events industry. Meetings Podcast is a conversation with a variety of voices that looks at events, meetings, and media. Meetings Podcast is sponsored by IMAX America, America's worldwide exhibition for incentive travel, meetings, and events. Hey, podcast listeners, this is Mike McAllen from Grass Shack Events and Media Production Company and AV for Planners, a audiovisual vetting service. I wanted to uh, do this little intro to say I talked today to Martin Vanest. We used blab.im to record the podcast, and it's a little bit funky. He's in Belgium, and I'm in uh, the San Francisco area, so uh, excuse me for the uh, sometimes it'll come kind of goes in and out but it all, all in all it's a lot of good information for martin um he's a great guy uh, i wanted to thank our sponsors today uh one of the sponsors is uh let's see let's audible um audible uh you can go to audibletrial.com backward slash meetings podcast and you can uh, download some audiobooks it's that that's a um you get a, a one free audiobook and 30 days free. I use Audible all the time. Uh, recently, I've read books called, you know, uh, the one about Elon Musk, the new one, which is very interesting. I read Boys in the Boat, which I really enjoyed. It's a fun, fun book. Um, and also, uh, so you can just go over to um, audibletrial.com backward slash medias podcast. And our other uh, sponsor is 99designs. Uh, 99designs is a one-stop shop for all things graphic design related. Um, you know, I do own a production company, corporate production company, and I know how much it takes to design logos. It takes a ton of time and expense. You know, I have a, proof, a, a, a group of proven graphic designers and um, I understand that, you know, the, making sure the look and feel of the show has to be synced up. Um, and we charge pretty good money um, for that. But there are other, also cases when you don't need a production company, and that's when 99designs can come in, and they can really um, come in handy. You can make you know logos, business cards, banners for your websites. It's a great place to do brainstorming um, for you know your meeting. Um, they can do sketches, mock-ups. Um, and it's, how it works is it, it's... Um, you go on there and tell the designers what they want, and a bunch of designers from all over the world will come on and send you sketches and mock-ups of your logo um, or project for your business or whatever you want graphic graphically. But then you choose which one's your favorite, and then you just work with that one designer to make it perfect. So that's it. Um, if you don't like any of them, you get your money back. Just go to 99designs. Yeah, that's where it is. And if you want to help out the show, um, you can go to tinyurl.com backward slash meetings 99. That's tinyurl.com backward slash meetings 99. Um, I hope you enjoy the show. And um, let's get right into talking with Martin. And I will close out the show later. Uh, when it's over, I'll kind of fill in any gaps, and, and you can be on your way, and I appreciate you listening to the show. So let's talk to Martin. Uh, one thing, too, was we did it on Blab, but I also did it from the back of my car, uh, <laughs> recorded it because it was so loud where I was. So I just got in the back of the car, and I think I found my new uh, sound, my mobile sound studio. So anyway, that's it, and uh, have a have a great day, and thank you for listening. All right, welcome back to the Meetings Podcast. I'm here with Martin Vanest. Hi, Martin. Hello, Mike. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm in my mobile studio here, our uh, Tesla, because it's the only quiet place that I could find Beautiful. to chat Super. with you. I'm going to read a I quick little. I'm going to read a quick little bio about you um, that I pulled from the interwebs so people know who you are. Um, you started your company, Abbott Video, in 1982. How old were you then? Were you like 13 or something? Uh, just 18. Uh, just turned 18. That's very cool. And it grew from an AV <laughs> company over production to a full-service meeting design company. After more than 30 years, he is seen as the meeting industry leader and visionary with a focus on meeting design. His CMM business plan project became a reality as the Meeting Support Institute in 2006. And it's now called the Meeting Design Institute is a member-based organization that educates and exposes meeting planners to a meeting design and its toolbox. In 2007, Martin wrote a groundbreaking book, Mar 
meeting architecture and manifesto and that's where i first met you actually uh because i love that book um your book this became the industry bestseller that led to an international movement and educational projects with focus on the object-based meeting design the meeting design institute organized events like the fresh conference and education like the five-day training in meeting architecture the 2000, uh, two, uh, 2013 Meeting Architecture Process, or MAP, workbook provides standard meeting design methodology. Martin is an influential innovator, author, trainer, and speaker. So that's you, Martin. Now you know who you are. Wow. Yes. Who wrote that? That's a nice one. It really Can is. Can you send me a copy? <laughs> <laughs> Um, you also received the IMEX Academy Award in 2005 and the MPI wow. Rise Award for Industry Leadership in 2011. Mm -hmm. What else have you done? You've done a lot of stuff. Yeah, lots of stuff. Huh? And uh, I, I, I enjoy the ride. It's uh, it's going great. We had uh, a lot of fun and uh, it's still having, you know, and it's moving forward. So it's really nice. Very, very cool. Um, yes. So, oh, getting some feedback. So, um, tell me your favorite quote. Ah, the favorite quote, huh? Um, yes. There is one, uh, um, and it says, uh, believe, uh, believe you can, and you're halfway there. Uh, it's from uh, one of your presidents, Roosevelt. So, <laughs> believe can, and you're halfway there. So, it's, yeah, it's close to... Yes, we can, but uh, you know it's a little longer. That's I think great. Was, Very good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, how did you get first get into the industry? I mean, it looks like you, as you said, you started your company so young. Was it? How did that work? Take, take us kind of through the path of how you got started. Well, um, I was uh, when I was sixteen. I started to uh, be into in photography, and so I bought. Uh, my first camera, and and uh, but and then also had a dark room in my bedroom. So I, I closed the auction of my bedroom and turned it into a dark room to develop my own pictures in black and white. You know, with the uh, whole projection and chemicals thing, um, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and was playing and experimenting with that. And um, when 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 video started to become affordable, not really, but uh, I bought my my first video camera real soon, VHS. And um, and had a lot of fun with it. And then one day, uh, I was watching the news on television with my parents, and um, that's when uh, VHS was on TV as a news item. And they said, uh, "Wow, this is something cool." And my father said, "How about you making videos for children in school so they can learn something from this?" And and then one thing led to another, and ultimately we said, "They said, like, why don't you start your own company?" So. So actually, my father uh, took me, you know, from photography to video in a way. And uh, and you have to know my father is blind. So he saw stuff uh, that uh, has, you know, thoroughly influenced my life uh, around visual communication as a wow. blind person. So that was, uh, uh, that was how I see my company, you know, kind of moved me on that path and, and gave me the support uh, that I needed. It's very cool. Very cool. Yeah, my daddy. <laughs> um, so, what's the biggest challenge has come from all of this? What that you encountered when you started this, this, th that when you started doing that? Probably your yeah, age. I'm thinking maybe was it? Go ahead. Age, sorry. Yeah, of course. You have no idea what you're starting at, and this is me. You know, jumping into something uh, and uh, fearless. You know. Um, not thinking, uh, impulsive. And uh, uh, so you bump into some walls and you don't really understand. You don't have any clients when you open a shop. <laughs> so I had no idea about uh, marketing or communication. I had no clients, no connections whatsoever in the in the industry. But, you know, I, I had a few small projects and one thing led to another. And all of a sudden, I, you know, I was, I was working. I was doing stuff. Uh, but the first year were very tough. You know, I saw... I, I saw some difficult periods and laying uh, awake at night, not, you know, thinking I'm not going to be able to pay my rent and stuff like that. But, you know, ultimately things went well 
and um, I survived and, you know, stuff so, uh, so in the you've always, you've always worked for yourself? Yeah, yeah. That's a terrible thing, isn't it? <laughs> I, yeah. No, it's a fantastic thing. It's a fantastic <laughs> I don't know. Thing. I don't know. I think you miss uh, the, the environment uh, and, and the experience of being part of a team. And so I've always been on top of a team. And that yeah. makes me, you know, maybe not the best possible manager. I don't know. It's, uh, it's an interesting uh, thing to think about. So um, then from there, where did it go? So then you kept going, basically, to continue on with your path. So then you started the video project. Then it went on to what made you make the jump to doing like yeah. AV. Because that must have costed yeah. some serious money to buy equipment and stuff, right? That's Yeah, yeah. That, that, was that must have been a yeah, I mean, in 1982, uh, buying a, a, a simple one tube, there was tubes still, there were no chips yet, a tube feed, like a video camera plus a VHS recorder connected with a cable was like semi-professional stuff. And then a VHS editing set, you know, two VHS machines and a controller, so you could edit from one tape to another after you filmed them in something, you could edit it. That was... Um, you know, a lot of money. I, 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 I put more than half of my entire capital into that video equipment and it never really worked well because it was like, you know, too new and, and uh, every other cut you made uh, was, was a bad cut. And so it was really uh, a, total, a total mess, you know, fun <laughs> investment. So that's a good start, you know, half yeah. of your money goes into this equipment and, and, and you can't really use it. But, you know, I kept on working and, doing stuff and always creative and uh, innovative and with a good spirit and um, you know so it, so when it, you so when did you move to the next level then what did yeah, that happen the, so first we did some some video uh, work only and I did a few rich videos even and uh, and then uh, moved to uh, a tour with a with one of those TV guys here that does a quiz on TV and we took the quiz into the country and so I had to buy sound and light all of a sudden. So I, it was like, like a whole uh, DIY shop and, 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 and making uh, some light boxed up and decor. And I was, the, um, I was the only guy with a van taking the sound, the decor, the video, the projection. We had a projector in those days. That was really early with one of those parabolic screens. That was amazing. And, uh, and so that was very very old stuff, very heavy. And the one person with the help of the local people from the venue to set up the sound, the light, the video projection, everything, the core and everything, and then do the show on my own and then load everything back up oh into my, my van and then go to the next one. So so I made some money there. I bought a new van and was able to invest. And, you know, that led to some company na nearby, pharmaceutical company, asking for some support for a – for a meeting they did, and I said, yeah, I can do all of that sound, I know light, I can do video, I can do everything. So that, you know, one thing led to another, and that's how you know, things happen. Very cool. So when did you know, was there an aha moment looking yeah. back that you knew you were in the right business? Can you repeat that question? Because I, I didn't hear it. it. Is Was there a time that you said, oh, yeah, it was like an aha moment, like, oh, I know that I'm on the right track. Was Can you remember back to when you thought, oh, this is going to work? Is there, is there a time you can remember? Yeah, there was definitely uh, uh, an aha moment when I went to the first meeting industry show, which was uh, EIBTM in, in Geneva. And that was, uh, I think, um, somewhere in the early 90s, and, uh, or no, late 90s, 98, I think. Um, I went there and I, I saw all the venues and destinations. And I, I saw little or no uh, technology or meeting design, you know, things that were looking really at the meeting itself. And I thought I was part of the meeting industry by then. You know, I did a lot of meetings and conferences and supported them with production and, and some, you know, presentation and uh, AV and stuff. And so I was surprised to see that uh, there was nothing in the industry that was uh, this stuff. Aha moment where I said, "Okay, there is there is a space in the industry uh, to develop, uh, you know, a sector that doesn't seem to exist." And uh, 
And that was, uh, the, I went out, I sat in the sunshine on the, on the big lawn in front of this huge building. And I looked at people walking in and out of, of this building thinking, you know, what kind, what is this industry? And, and, and how does it work? And, and what do venues and destinations do versus the meeting itself? You know, when people present and talk and share and communicate and network and meet people and start projects, you know, what, where is that space? And uh, so that was kind of the start of a 10 year thinking that led to uh, writing this book, Meeting Architecture. Because I, I, I believe that we need in the meeting industry, we need this uh, industry profession that is really focusing on designing meetings for more impact and for more uh, networking and more learning and more fun. You know, uh, my, you know, my, my life's mission is born, was born there. Uh, that was an important aha moment. That's, that's very cool. And I, I'm surprised there aren't still aren't more like you're the only one who really pushes this stuff when you go to these events, as far as I can see, um, pushes the meeting design so forward. And you go to these events a lot of times and you see they're AV companies, but there's nobody in between there. A lot. There aren't that many people anyway. I don't go to a lot of meetings, but the ones I've been to, it's like I only see you most of the time. You're in the, in the yeah. meeting institute. Yes. I think we now have more and more uh, people doing this. Uh, look at uh, what uh, Ruth Janssen is doing and and uh, and rule around uh, their meeting design canvas. And MPI is picking up uh, oh, and they're right. doing a, a two day training. And uh, and the University of uh, San Diego is involved with that. And uh, look at uh, the segment of meeting design or. Uh, in in what CIC is doing, that's a growing a growing uh, uh, segment. Uh, there's there's and there's several people in Copenhagen. There's lots of attention to it, and they they just came out with a new card game to design better meetings. And then there is uh, uh, this other uh, guy from the Red Line project, and they have uh, some kind of uh, uh, scripting visual uh, system to also develop uh, and, and, and design better meetings and so so there's there's stuff happening and 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 i'm really happy to see that um you know it's growing and 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 it's growing in different ways and um we're we're, we're supportive of all the initiatives that people take to to educate and to help people design better meetings very cool okay so so take us um Take us on what you actually do. So if someone's just meeting you for the first time, what's what's your current business? What what are you doing? Go into a little detail well, about I, like how 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 if someone wanted to work with you, how would it work? How would it work? There's lots of different uh, things I do, um, and there is still company Abbott, where which which I started when I was eighteen. But uh, as you were in the introduction, there is now also the Meeting Design Institute. And um, yeah, there is um, uh, lots of different things. There's lots of different places where we could meet and, and, and work. Uh, I mean, the, the fundamental basic uh, technical support and technology uh, and uh, like audiovisual is still there, but we're now also uh, more and more helping clients with redesigning uh, their their conferences so you know making workshops work for example was a, was a project with a big pharmaceutical uh, company where we helped them take the the the, the workshop the so-called workshops from the kind of still classical top-down presentation and a quick q a at the end model to a higher level of interaction and more uh, learning from each other besides learning from the uh, the speaker so, so that's another space where we are getting more and more active, and it's I, th I love that obviously it's a lot of fun, and it's it's actually I would say it's taking the unconference, uh, which is a conference where people don't actually speak uh, to each other but just listen to a speaker, to reconferencing into a more dynamic and more productive uh, conference where people really talk again they re-conference they talk again to each other like it used to be in the past long time ago when there was no av you know when there was no big screens and no 
no microphones and, and loudspeakers. Now you can have a presentation for 5,000 people and you can whisper to them, you know, because there is a microphone and there's loudspeakers. You yeah. can whisper to people, 5,000 people. That, you used to be a real loud shouter like Mussolini or something, uh, able to talk to a, a huge crowd in a in square and the square was built, you know, acoustically to make that possible. Now, you know, we talk to 5,000 people. That's not a conference. That's unconference, I think. You know, people are sitting in rows, listening to an expert. It's nice. It's important, but we need more. We need also people need to meet each other and talk to each other. And so, how do you get, how, do you, how do you get the, into these conversations? Like, I mean, I I see like there's all these like having a, a production AV company. How does that? How do you find? How do you get to the right people to have these conversations? I guess that's not yeah. that's not that's a hard question, but I just thought like it's interesting because you have such. Um, I love the methodology of going in and making a better meeting, but as being in the trenches for so many years, like I have too, to get to that conversation seems to be to get them to do something different is such a you know. You know, we're talking to meeting planners, but they're not in those conversations of what we're going to actually. Um, they are some of them are, but most of the time they're doing logistics. How, what's your what's your secret sauce for starting these conversations? Well, I think it's relentless, uh, relentless communication. You know, you have to keep on going and uh, in and talk about this. Um, where am I? Let me hang on. Just, um, some video started in the background. I'm in full screen now. F11. Get out of full screen. <laughs> Shut up. Shut this guy up. Okay. I'm sorry. Are we still here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all here. No worries. No worries at all. So, um, yeah, this is this is a very important and interesting question because I think that's where where change will happen and. Uh, if you can't have the conversation, if people don't ask or are not open to that conversation, you know, then nothing is going to happen. And it, it's a challenge. Um, it's a, a, a true challenge to to get to the conversation. And I think it's just constantly, constantly communicating about this. Um, and people, you know, uh, even in, 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 you know, in my environment where, where I do nothing else but speak about this and write about this and um, still, you know, it's a, it's a, it's not so um, easy. I think it's a, a bit of a chicken and egg situation where people don't ask an, an architect to build their house uh, because they don't know there is no architects, you know, and, and th there is no architects because there is no business for architects. So I think we are in this slowly growing spiral that is going to be a, a positive spiral is going to be bigger and bigger ultimately because now people, especially associations, start asking for it. They are challenged. Uh, there is, there has been the ROI in the past. Now there is an additional push. Kids will not sit down in a row of chairs to listen to a, an expert for two days on end. They will not come back to the conference, and they know this. Associations feel this already, so they feel that there is a need for innovation and change to keep that young generation coming to the conference. And if they don't. They will, the young people will organize their own conferences. And you know how they're like. They're uh, bar camps and, you know, all kinds of uh, uh, formats where there's lots of spontaneity, lots of interaction between people. I think mean, that's crucial. This is, this is, this is happening now. Yeah. Lots of these large yeah. conferences are, are afraid to lose just the, the, the big thing that they have, and it's the conference. So, but you still have to go slow and carefully, and they need the support of the, you know, of the boards, and they need um, they need the support of the speakers and of the chairs, and so it's it's still a, a challenging situation. Where um, <laughs> a project going on right now that uh, you wanted to talk about at all? Is there something in that vein, um, or where you're headed, maybe yeah. with it? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, we we just made the next uh, uh, impulsive jump by starting a five day training. And um, and so the decision is there now to make um, to turn that into a certification uh, program. So it's a certificate program, a certificate training. But the next step, and that's the most exciting one, is certification meeting architecture. So so 
if people can show and demonstrate that they have skills and experience in different things uh, that are core to designing better meetings, then they can earn a certificate in meeting architect. So, so then they can become a certified meeting architect. So that's the ultimate goal. Um, and, and I think we're getting close to that. And I feel that there is enough uh, space to get this thing moving and enough support from a number of companies to get this thing moving. Very cool. And are you doing it here in the States? Yes, absolutely. Uh, this is going to be global. I mean, it's going to be online for, 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 for a large uh, proportion. Um, and, but also uh, the five-day training will be, uh, will be definitely uh, happen somewhere in North America. And where, um, just quickly, where can, they get, where can people get more information on that? Uh, I think um, the best thing uh, uh, go to the website of uh, the Meeting Support Institute, Meeting Design Institute. Uh, so Meeting Design uh, Institute is uh, what you Google for. And there is uh, different ways to stay in touch. There is a Meeting Architecture group on LinkedIn is, is a good way of, of connecting. Um, but also you can register for the emailing list uh, at uh, the Meeting Design Institute website. Very cool. Okay. So let me ask you a few questions that are not just to kind of learn more about you. Um, I wanted to ask some questions that would kind of be uh, maybe people who are listening, if they're meeting planners, meeting professionals could learn, you know, maybe get some, some, some tips from you of how to be successful, basically. Um, do you have, um, can you take us through a typical day? Do you have like any morning like rituals? Do you eat special stuff? Do you look <laughs> at, do you look at special websites in the morning when you wake up? Do you, you know, is there cer certain sites that you go to immediately to get your information or news sites? So just kind of take us through a typical morning. Say, do you have, Go ahead. I think I think there's a there's not a lot of typical, at, at, uh, 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 you know, from to be said from my mornings. But in the weekends, I do prepare a uh, a nice bowl of freshly made oatmeal, and I I made a little I make a little special with some nuts and some raisins, and I make my own mix. So that's that's something I do um, I do in the weekend uh, mornings. Um, and I would also read a newspaper in the weekends only. A weekday is a coffee, a shower, and off you go. Uh, and then, <laughs> then, it's, then it's a day, you know, uh, that can sometimes be rather planned and sometimes can be very open, very, uh, very hectic always. Uh, my door is always open. Uh, lots of calls, lots of meetings, lots of presentations, so, um, and lots of emails, you know, but um, I love it. Uh, it's... Uh, it's always fun. Uh, sometimes it's a little too much, uh, you know, uh, deadlines, writing, producing, uh, but uh, it can be quite hectic. But my door is always open and uh, people can walk in. Uh, not only real people walk into my real door, but also I have a, a virtual door as well. That people can walk in through that door as well uh, in a virtual way. And like, do you use Skype and... Is that your main one, or how are people virtually walking through your door? No, um, the, this is uh, Kubi. Um, Kubi is an iPad on a on a on a kind of oh. a, little, a little neck, so you can look around, up, down, left, right, and um, so people can just walk in, uh, and, and, which means it's set to uh, pick up and open immediately. So, so all of a sudden, somebody is there. And they can see whether I'm in a conversation or not, or uh, whether I'm talking to somebody that's really here, or or I'm available. And then we can have a conversation. That's uh, that's uh, what Kubi is doing for me. It's right there in front of me. Oh, and, really? Uh, somebody, yeah, somebody just walked in and uh, and is listening in at the moment. So Kubi then, is Kubi a uh, then an app that goes along with that? So is the yeah. other person just yeah. logging into so if, Kubi? If you have the Kubi and uh, and an iPad, it just goes. It runs with uh, uh, Kubi Video. So the person on the other side can actually look, uh, look uh, operate the thing and have the video conversation and sound connect at the same time. So that's very simple. It's very you know intuitive. 
and easy to operate. <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Does uh, So what did you want to be as a kid? Oh, um, I think the first thing I remember is uh, maybe not a kid, but uh, like a 16, 17-year-old is a uh, psychiatrist or a video the, a film director. Nice. Nice. What book do you gift others besides, I guess, the Median Architecture book? Is that the one you gift everybody? <laughs> I just picture you have stacks of them that you're handing them out all the time. <laughs> it's, it's okay. The stacks are almost gone, so it's time for a new, a new version of it, I think. Uh, but we do have some stacks of the Tweeting Meeting, which is a, a nice book right. on social media for meetings and events right. that we have uh, produced with the support of uh, a couple of sponsors IMAX uh, among them, uh, and um, and uh, so we're handing out those on a regular basis uh, during trainings or trade shows and stuff like that. And so and so you have two books, correct? And they are the meeting architecture and the tweeting meeting. And where can people find those if they wanted to get them again at the meeting uh, support institute? Yeah, but also I think uh, there is um, a way of uh, getting a printed copy through Amazon. Ah, uh, perfect. Oh, perfect. Yeah, and and I, I think the third book I would say is the is our catalog, the toolbox for meeting design. is It's not really a book, but there's lots of information in there as well, and it's regularly updated. You can download this for free. Ah, oh, you got one. Super. <laughs> oh, nice. So <laughs> that's funny. I happen to have well, one. For those of you listening on I, the audio podcast, I we're on Blab right now, and I showed him. I had one sitting next to me because I grabbed all my my Martin stuff when I tried to quickly get. But anyway. So he, I showed him the book, and he showed me his. So, have you ever had a uh, a nickname? Yeah, there is a there is a new on, uh, on painting and, and education and meeting design, and that's a, a pretty exciting uh, thing. We've you know started to compile a list of all the courses that are out there for uh, designing better meetings, and some of them talk about uh, oration or facilitation or some, some about uh, hybrid stuff like the PCMA, uh, Virtual Edge Institute uh, course and certificate. Some about meeting design uh, processes, some about ROI. So there's lots of stuff, lots of good stuff out there. And I'm sure it's not complete. And we'll keep updating this uh, three times a year uh, as we did in the past. And so this is going to be a growing resource for meeting design and, 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 and anyone that's interested in it. Very cool. So, Martin, did you ever have a nickname, and uh, what yeah. was it and why? Well, I, that's uh, when I was, I think, 13, 14, 15 years old. Uh, the village where my parents had a weekend house, when I went there, I, I was always helping the farmers. Uh, in those days, there was still one farmer that was plowing the field with his horse. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, ages ago. Um, and they would have... Uh, they would, um, how do you say that, uh, slaughter a pig, you know, themselves uh, in those days. But I was helping uh, farmers also with uh, uh, feeding calves. My name is Martin. And short in, in my village was uh, Meta. Meta was short for my, my first name. And, uh, and then they turned it into Mutta. And a Mutta is actually a dialect word for, for calf. But they called me calf uh, because I was feeding... <laughs> Feeding the calves milk, you know, this battery of calves milk uh, it was like a, you know, a calf uh, industry almost, uh, uh, and that's that's how I got my nickname. But it was also only in the weekends, you know, all, only for the locals in this uh, in this village where I where I was in the weekends. How funny! So, um, what is the country you've visited that you love the most? Uh, say say again. What is the what that I visited? What is, what is the country you have visited that you've loved the most? Because you travel a lot. Oh, oh, I would say, I would say America because it's so diverse. I mean, if you go to, I think it's any European country has its, its very specific culture. Uh, and and on the second place, it would be Portugal. Uh, um. My sister has a farm in Portugal, and and it's uh, you know it's amazing it's an amazing place. Uh, but that, 
Very cool. That would be uh, my, my top two. What's the best advice you've ever received? <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. What's the best advice you've ever received? Oh. Ooh, that's a big one. Uh, best advice I've ever received. Ah, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's not really advice, but um, some some speaker uh, in a, in a presentation at an MP, a local MPI chapter uh, used uh, a metaphor of uh, you know looking into the mirror versus looking through a window, uh, and that is something I I, I I tried to do since then because I knew I wasn't very good at uh, at this and I needed to pay attention to that. So that was a very powerful metaphor to. You know, to uh, to me, you know, and, and who I am. Very cool. So, so what's working for you right now? Is there a new like app that you're really excited about, or you're taking a vitamin? You know, is there an exercise program? Do you exercise at all? You always look like you're fit, or you just work. I think the Kubi. You know, Kubi is really uh, nice. It works for me because we have uh, people in different uh, places. Um, and uh, it's uh, easy for them to walk in, you know. It's really uh, really an interesting uh, device. It's a very simple thing. It's always on. And then there's much more uh, closeness between uh, this office and the people that work here. That's easy, but also between the people that are working abroad. Did, does the other person has to have a app, I mean, have to have a, uh, a, a, a an iPad to use Kubi? Is that how it works? No, you can also do, you, you can just click on the link in my signature, uh, which is uh, taking you to a web page. And it can be on Google Chrome, for example, on any PC or, or iPad or, you know, an iPad, you can use uh, an app, but uh, you don't have to. You can just go to this link and it's going to enable you to look around and move around and talk to me. Very cool. Uh, what, what's your favorite industry event that you attend, and what what makes it your favorite? Yeah, I think uh, I would be choosing my own event. You know, the conference. Um, the French because conference. It's, yeah, because it's such a fun event. Um, it's such a wonderful bunch of people getting together. It's still small enough to to meet. Uh, Many people to get to know new new people as well. It's lots of fun, lots of experimenting, um, you know, interesting topics. All about meeting design, and so it's really focused and um, yeah. And it's great to work with the people that are on the team. Uh, it's we do some really fun stuff there. So when is the next? <laughs> uh, it depends on uh, the, the sponsors we get. Uh, and so we're looking at uh, the um, beginning of the summer uh, in uh, present city. Very cool. Um, what's what's the coolest new trend you're seeing and uh, and are excited about? I think I think one one of the one of the good things that is happening at the moment I think is a, a so, sort of a counter wave against. Uh, too much technology. Um, I think people are cooling down a bit. You know, I think we're we've been overexcited about this for a while. Social media, technology, mobile apps, all this stuff. I think people are cooling down. I think we're getting to a level where we can start looking at um, all sorts of elements uh, around uh, meeting design, not just technology. So I, I think that's a good trend, um, and and nothing wrong with technology at all but you know too much is just too much and i think we can only handle so much information and it becomes just you know cognitive it just becomes a challenge even if, even if you're young or old it doesn't matter uh there is a limit to what we can handle what we can learn and what we can grasp and the number of user interfaces that we can handle you know even facebook alone on my phone on my ipad on my pc looks different has buttons in different places, does different things, and, and and offers you different possibilities. So, just learning how to work with Facebook takes you three user interfaces, um, and that's not that's just too much, I think. You know, so 
we're starting to learn how to Permian design is that people now are looking around, opening up to all the other stuff. There is art, there is there is people, there is technical stuff, you know, simple AV things. There is design, there is you know, conceptual thinking around meeting design. So, so I think I think it, we're we're moving into that you know more holistic approach to meeting design, uh, and and I think that's a good thing. So the last question, um, if you could talk to that 18 or year old you when you first started your uh, video company, what, what advice would you give yourself or what would you tell yourself to do? Yeah, I, I think um, uh, one, of the, one of the questions you, 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 you were talking about before uh, this interview is uh, everybody loves you, but what's that one but that people always talk about? Uh, and it's, uh, <laughs> I, I actually come, came up with three things and it's the three eyes, you know, the three eyes and it's, it's, to, I'm impatient, I'm impulsive and I'm kind of impertinent sometimes. So, uh, <laughs> the three eyes, uh, two sons, uh, 15 and, and, and 14 years old. And I know, I know what I'm, I'm going to tell them. I know, I know. Uh, especially the youngest is more like a, a, a copy of myself, uh, and I know what to tell him about these three eyes and how to, you know, get over it faster than his daddy. Because I think it took me about uh, 52 years. Like last summer, I think uh, something happened in Portugal. I was three weeks on vacation, which is one week longer than usual, and I think something happened here. Um, and and I, I think I'm gonna tell them that this is their issue and uh, and and that they need to think about it and try to get over it faster. Because if you, if they if they can do this when they're 30 rather than 50, I think they will be much more happy, much more successful in life than their daddy was. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great, Martin. Thank you so much for talking with me. How um, can people get a hold of you if they want to get a hold of you? I guess the QB is now. You'll have a thousand people talking to you. No. Yeah. I, the, they of course need to link to the Kubi, um, and that's maybe uh, a bit of a, um, a challenge. I don't know if, uh, uh, people will be able to read this, but my Skype address is first name dot last name, so Martin with a double E, uh, M A A R T E N dot Van Nesty, which is V A N N E S T E. That's my Skype uh, connection uh, or email. Uh, same thing at abit.eu so abit with a b b i t dot e u so that's that's me uh and the way to and if i'm happy to share this link i mean everybody that sends me an email gets a reply and the reply uh has uh in the in the subject has the word kubi and you click on it and you're in my office so what be you know welcome to try it out very cool all right martin well thank you so much and um it's always a pleasure talking to you and i hope to see you soon sometime we'll paths will cross so Super. thanks so much thank you thank you thank you mike it's good to talk to you you too okay that was fun thank you for uh, listening in i love talking to martin martin vaneste is uh from abbott he is from the meeting support institute as you know check out his books meeting architecture also uh the tweed meeting and of course pick up the toolbox for meeting design that's the meeting architects toolbox um, it's always great talking to Martin um, wanted to thank our sponsors audible trial.com backward slash meetings podcast for a free audiobook and 30 days um, of audible for free um, and also wanted to thanks thank uh, 99 designs uh, for go there again get some graphics done it's a great way to brainstorm uh, and actually find the best graphic designers in the world. Um, you can go to tinyurl.com backward slash meetings 99. That's for um, for 99 designs. So thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate you listening to the show and staying this long, listening all the way through. And uh, have a fantastic day. And I will. We appreciate and thank you for listening to the meetings podcast. Please email with any questions or comments to meetingspodcast at gmail.com. Meetings Podcast is sponsored by IMAX America, America's worldwide exhibition for incentive travel, meetings, and events. 
The Meetings Podcast theme music is brought to you by the Delgado Brothers, which can be found at delgadobrothers.com.